Take care of my old lady. With these words, my husband left the house with a suitcase. How could he be so selfish? I stood there stunned, looking at the front door, where my husband had disappeared. Moments later, I locked eyes with my mother-in-law. Oh, mom, were you awake? This is bad. I wondered if she heard what my husband just said. As I panicked, my mother-in-law smiled gently and said, Let's sell this house right away. My name is Casey, and I'm a 32-year-old housewife. I've been married to my husband Nathan for two years. We met when we worked at the same workplace. He is three years older than me and served as my mentor when I joined the company. That's when I started admiring him. And that admiration persisted even after I started working on my own. From then on, we began working together on the same tasks. Little by little, the distance between us grew smaller. We began going for drinks and started exchanging small messages. I felt like he was starting to like me. Around that time, he started inviting me on dates. And after a few more dates, he confessed his feelings to me, and we started dating officially. Then we continued our relationship. He was so sweet and gentlemanly. He took good care of me when we were dating. And about a year and a half into our relationship, he proposed to me. From now on, I want you to always be by my side, supporting me. Please marry me. Yes, thank you so much. And so, we decided to get married. We quickly went to meet each other's parents, and the announcement went smoothly. After introducing our families, we had our wedding ceremony, attended by many friends and colleagues who blessed our marriage. Following a honeymoon abroad, we returned home to start our newlywed life. Our early married life was delightful. My husband said he wanted me to become a homemaker after getting married. So I quit my job and became a full-time housewife. From then on, I worked hard on household chores and supported my husband. Since I had lived alone for a long time, I had no trouble with cooking and cleaning. I enjoy cooking, so I can prepare various homemade dishes for my husband. My husband always tells me that the dishes I make are delicious, and he eats them with a satisfied expression. Being a homemaker comes with a various busy and challenging aspect, but just seeing my husband enjoy the meals happily motivates me to keep going. On days off, we spend an enjoyable time together, and that's how we were happily living our newlywed life. However, recently, after two years of a married life, an event occurred that changed the situation. That's because my father-in-law passed away from a sudden illness. My father-in-law's death was so sudden and so shocking. Many people attended the funeral, indicating that he was well regarded. After the funeral, my husband made a proposal. I feel bad leaving mom alone, so I'd like to move in with her. What? Living together? Yeah, I think especially in times like this, we should support each other. I'm an only child, and there is no one else she can rely on. Well, okay. I decided to accept my husband's suggestion. While living together brought some anxiety, my mother-in-law had been kind to me. I was suddenly worried about leaving my mother-in-law alone. My husband expressed gratitude to me and quickly proposed living together to his mother. Initially, she seems hesitant, but when we assured her that there was nothing to worry about and she didn't need to hold back, she expressed gratitude for the offer. Mom, I'm counting on you from today. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. There may be areas where I fall short. But if that happens, please guide me. No, no need for guidance. I can still move, so let's work on house chores together. 
Yes, thank you. My mother in law was very kind, and living together was incredibly enjoyable. We share the cooking and stuff. My mother in law has seasoning that I would never use. My cooking repertoire has grown thanks to my mother in law. My mother in law also told me all kinds of funny stories that always made me laugh. My mother in law said she'd always wanted a daughter too. I sometimes go to lunch during the weekday and have tea at a cafe. I spent a lot of time getting along well with my mother in law. At first, I was worried about living with a mother in law, feeling it might not go well. However, it turned out to be more enjoyable and happy than I had anticipated. I even thought it was better that we lived together. But after a little while of living together, my husband's work became increasingly busy. He used to come home by 7 30 p.m. at the latest, but recently, He often arrived after 10 p.m., sometimes even past midnight, and he would skip dinner. Despite the effort my mother in law and I put into preparing meals, it was disheartening when he didn't eat them. Sometimes, we had to endure the pain of sharing their uneaten food for lunch. Still, I endure it. Understanding that my husband was working hard and he was the sole provider. The fact that he worked and provided for us made me appreciate the time spent with my mother in law. And I think it helped that I enjoyed being alone with my mother in law. Regarding my husband's dinner, I started preparing the ingredients in advance and quickly assembling the meal when he ate at home. The basic solution worked well. I can now honestly support my husband's hard work and dedication to his career. That's how I spend my happy days. However, one day, I noticed a strange feeling. It was about my mother in law. She seems to be increasingly absent minded, staring blankly at one point, and sometimes not responding even when I called. Concerned, I discussed it with my husband, who agreed that this was the first time she had shown such behavior. And we decided to take her to the hospital. To our surprise, the doctor revealed a shocking truth. My mother in law was diagnosed with depression. It was hard to believe, considering the enjoyable conversation and the many smiles I had witnessed while living together. Why is mom depressed? Nathan seems puzzled, unsure of what to do. But recently, My mother in law has been truly downhearted. Maybe she is suppressing the shock and sorrow of losing her husband. Could it be that these emotions occasionally resurface, plunging her into sudden darkness? I was surprised when my mother in law was diagnosed with depression. But if there is anything I can do, I want to help. We need to support her. Well, yeah. Nathan. Is something wrong? Well, with my job being busy, I find it challenging to focus on mom. So, can I leave mom to you? Huh? Are you asking to take care of her? No, it's not like that. Since you are always at home, Casey, I thought you could handle it. This isn't something to delegate. We should work together. I know. But I have to support this family, don't I? That's all we can do. You are a stay at home wife, so I leave it to you. That's. Nathan, in such a manner, handed over the responsibility of his depressed mother to me. Despite being his own mother, how could he say such selfish things? I questioned my husband's attitude and felt that he might not be reliable when needed. Despite these concerns, I decided to comfort my mother in law. How are you feeling, mom? Oh, I'm fine. Casey, I'm sorry. My mood has been a bit low lately. It's okay. I'm here to listen. Whenever you feel like talking, please do. 
Expressing your worries can make you feel better. Yes. Even though my mother in law responded this way, her face betrayed a sense of despondency. She seems to be carrying some burden, and I hoped I could lighten her heart a little. However, my husband showed no sign of concern for his mother. On the contrary, he started coming home later and often went out on weekends. I can't stand being at home all the time. It's suffocating. Let me have some time to unwind. My husband did as he pleased, even though my mother in law is suffering from depression. Why can he live such a self centered life? Moreover, my husband gradually reduced the money he contributed to the household. Why is there less money coming home when you're working overtime? It can't be helped. I also have various social obligations for the sake of career advancement. I thought I would increase my spending money, and that's how it turned out. This is. My feelings toward my husband waned with his high handed attitude. One day, my mother in law developed a high fever. I rushed her to the hospital and nursed her back to health. When I informed my husband, he was taken aback. What? A fever? Spare me. Huh? I'm leaving on a trip from tomorrow. Huh? A trip? Yeah, I'm going on an overseas trip with friends. I didn't hear about this. I kept quiet because you would complain if I told you in advance. This is. Besides, your mother has a high fever and you're going on a trip? Obviously. Moreover, make sure you don't infect me. And absolutely do not call me when mom is around, okay? Nathan made a gesture, covering his mouth with his arm, as he entered the room. He truly the worst. Even though his own mother is suffering from a high fever, he treats her like a carrier of some infectious disease. I suddenly felt my affection for him fade away. It's really pitiful for your mother. That someone like you is her son. And my husband wouldn't come to the dining room for meals. When he finished packing, he went off somewhere. Then, he came back about an hour later, so he must have finished his meal outside. It's really too selfish. The next morning, my husband was up early for breakfast. It's a time he would never normally wake up at. I'm sure that's how much he looks forward to traveling abroad. How many days will you be traveling? One week. Huh? A week? Yeah, we're going abroad for a change. We've got to enjoy it to the fullest. Oh, yeah. I couldn't even get a word out anymore. I guess family is not important to this person. And my husband hemmed as he headed for the front door. Take care of my old lady. Saying this, he left the house with a suitcase. How could he act so selfishly? I stood there dumbfounded, watching him leave. Then, a few seconds later, I made eye contact with my mother in law. When I turned around, there she was, my mother in law. Oh, mom, were you already awake? I thought you were still sleeping since you had a fever yesterday. I wonder if she heard what my husband just said. As I panicked, my mother in law smiled gently and said, Let's sell this house right away. Huh? I didn't quite understand what my mother in law meant. What do you mean? There is no medicine that can cure the boy anymore. Let's divorce him, sell the house, and leave. My mother in law reported this shocking news to me. What? An affair? Yes, that boy is having an affair. This is the evidence. My mother in law showed me the result of the investigation she had commissioned. No way. In the pictures, my husband and his affair partner are clearly visible. I'm sure he's planning to go on a trip with that woman starting today. I found out that my son is betraying you. I would tell you, 
but when I see your suffering face, I might also feel unbearable pain. And I'm afraid that I, being the mother of the one who committed adultery, might become your enemy. So I've been brooding over it for a long time, not being able to tell you. Wait, so your diagnosis of depression was probably because of your son's affair? Probably, yes. Your husband's affair is likely the cause. I see. To think that my mother-in-law had been pushed to such an extent. It's understandable that she wouldn't easily reveal her son's infidelity. I could no longer forgive my husband for making not only me, but my mother-in-law suffer like this. Mom, let's sell the house and leave. I've made up my mind. My mother-in-law nodded, and we sprang into action. My mother-in-law had had her house assessed in the past. I contacted the realtor at the time, and the process went smoothly. It seems that the house, with its good location and well-maintained condition, found a buyer quickly. As soon as my mother-in-law and I sold the house, we rented a room and moved in. Casey, live here alone. Huh? Why? Let's live together, Mom. No, no, no. We may be close now, but I'm the mother of that adulterous son. It's possible that eventually, you might look at me and be reminded of that awful child. You know, there is something I've been thinking about. It's about living in a luxury nursing home. I don't want to leave money behind for that ungrateful child who repays kindness with betrayal. So I thought I would use the money for myself and transfer the $34,000 to your account, Casey. Eh? No, I can't accept such a large sum. Why would you do that? That's for all the good times we've had living together. And I got a little down in the dumps toward the end. And I caused a lot of trouble. I've enjoyed our time together over the past year or so. Stay well even after parting ways with Nathan. Mom, I couldn't interfere with my mother-in-law's determination. But until I separate from my husband, we're still family. So I asked her to live together until then. My mother-in-law was embarrassed and said, If that's what you mean, we were to stay together until it was all over. A few days later, he apparently returned home. An aggressive phone call came from my husband. Hey, what the hell is going on? Why is my house someone else's now? Oh, you're back. Welcome home. But this is no longer your family home. Don't screw with me. Why is this happening? Because you betrayed me and your mother. That's why. What are you talking about? Don't play dumb. I know you're having an affair. Huh? Even during the overseas trip, you went with your affair partner, right? What are you talking about? I have no idea. I have evidence from the detective agency. We are getting divorced, and you will pay alimony. No, please! Spare me the alimony! I was planning to get a divorce, so that's fine. But alimony is not okay! What nonsense are you talking about? You had an affair, so it's only natural, isn't it? I have to support the child with her. What? A child? You got your affair partner pregnant? Well, not exactly pregnant. The child is already born. What? A baby is already born? It's not exactly a baby. It's three years old. Three years old? Wait a minute. So the child was born just after we got married? Uh, yeah. After we got married, it turned out she was pregnant and... Hold on a second. Were you involved with her even when we were dating? But I chose you as my spouse, right? Well, she still wants to focus on her career. So she said she didn't want to get married. That's just despicable. It's beyond worse. It can be helped. 
Love is blind, they say. Anyway, where's mom? She's suffering from depression, so I should be living with her. Just tell me where she is. I'm going there. I won't tell you. What are you saying? She's my mother. I have the right to know. Unfortunately, your mother doesn't want to see you anymore. That can't be true. I'm her only son. Regardless of an affair or whatever, I'm her beloved son. It's despicable that you thought that way. Mom got depression because of your affair, you know. What? After she found out about your affair, she hesitated to tell me and carried the burden alone. Mom's depression is because of you. Th that. But even so, she wouldn't cut ties with me, right? Just tell me where mom is. My husband was selfish to no end, and I was appalled. I'm here. What? M mom? You were with Casey? Why did you sell the house without telling me? That's because I'm fed up with you, of course. Mom, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but can you lend me some money? You heard what I just said, right? I need to pay alimony. And then, on top of that, I need a lot of money to remarry her. I was originally going to bring her and the kids to that house. If you've sold it, I don't blame you. You will have the money then, so use it for us. What are you talking about? I will never do that. I'm cutting myself off from you. What? What? Why? I'm your only son, remember? So what? No parent would stand being ridiculed to this extent. Well, you can still see your grandchild, you know. I would think a child born to Casey would be adorable. But a child born from some unknown, filthy woman, even if there is a blood connection, I can't find it cute. You betrayed Casey and me. You have done something grave enough to sever ties. Acknowledge it, reflect on it and live with it. Anyway, I won't have anything to do with it anymore. Th that's... My mother-in-law said that and hung up the phone. I'm sorry for hanging up abruptly. There's nothing more to talk about. After that, I sent a certified letter through a lawyer to my husband's workplace, demanding alimony for the affair. As my husband's workplace was also my former workplace, many superiors and colleagues who knew me criticized him severely. He ended up being demoted and transferred to a regional office with a pay cut. Currently, he's living a modest life in the countryside with his affair partner and their child, desperately trying to repay the alimony. A few months later, it seems affair partner got fed up with their frugal life and left with the child. Now he lives alone, paying child support and alimony, leading a lonely life. It serves him right. On the other hand, I found a new job, and while working actively, I'm enjoying my single life. My mother-in-law was able to move into the upscale senior facility she desired. She has made friends and seems to be having a great time every day. I occasionally visit her, go out for lunch, and hear stories about the senior facility. The stories are always entertaining, and I enjoy my time with her. I hope to continue the friendship with my mother-in-law and have occasional meetings like this in the future.